then test the theory that sharks can be petted. Find out how much of Jaws is true. They're back, meaner, leaner, and scarier than ever. Shark Week 92, beginning Sunday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. This is CNN. I'm proud to stand here with Bill Clinton at the beginning of a long, hard fight. The waiting and speculating is over. Bill Clinton taps Al Gore as his running mate. How does the choice play out strategically? Gore's from the South. He's considered a moderate Democrat. Is Bill Clinton wise to choose a political clone for a running mate? The same stripe, so you have a, a Southern moderate to conservative ticket. This is The World Today with Frank Sesno in Washington and Katherine Cryer at the CNN Center. Thanks for joining us. We begin our report with two Southerners, two baby boomers, the two halves of the Democratic ticket for campaign 92. The short list is finally now just one name. Bill Clinton is named Senator Al Gore of Tennessee as his choice for vice president. Both men stood with their families outside the governor's mansion in Arkansas where the announcement was made. Clinton told the crowd and the nation why he thinks Gore is the right man for the job. I said I wanted a vice president who really understood what had happened to ordinary Americans in the last 12 years. Someone who was committed to making government work again for average, hardworking American families. I said I wanted a vice president who would compliment me and my own experiences and bring other experiences, knowledge, and understanding to our common endeavor. We have watched for 12 long years as the Republican administration, still in power, has driven this country into the ditch. The time has come for all Americans to get off the sidelines, to get involved in the process, to be a part of the healing this country needs, to bring us together, not divide us one from another, to get to work on the changes for the average working people of this country. Senator Gore's background in politics goes back a long way. After three years as a newspaper reporter, he was first elected to the House in 76 and to the Senate eight years later. He ran for president as a moderate in 1988, but took his name out of consideration this year, citing family concerns. But now he's back, ready to tackle the job he once dismissed as a political dead end. CNN's Bob Franken has more on Gore's career and how he got on the ticket. The staff of Al Gore has worked very hard to help sell him to Governor Clinton. We will finally give the United States a real environmental presidency. While Senator Gore's staff is openly enthusiastic, friends acknowledge Gore is normally very reserved in public. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily consider that a flaw, <laughs> and I hope that nobody else will. Uh, this is a very friendly and genuine man. Although he is not a schmoozer, Gore is the consummate Washington insider, literally almost born to his position. His father, Al Gore Sr., was a three-term senator from Tennessee himself. The family home in Carthage, Tennessee, was not really where Gore Jr. grew up. This was really where Gore was raised. The nation's capital was the backdrop for his childhood. In fact, Gore has been called the senator from St. Albans after the exclusive Washington private school he attended. After college at Harvard and Vanderbilt, he began as a newspaper reporter, then was elected to the House in 1976 and the Senate in 84. His image has been that of very much the family man. Gore was an original sponsor of the legislation declaring Earth Day in 1990. A great deal of his emphasis in the Senate has been on environmental issues. I believe, and many others do, that the task of saving the Earth's environment will become the central organizing principle of the post-Cold War world. In fact, Gore is the author of a current best-selling book on the environment. On other issues, he personifies the so-called moderate wing of the Democratic Party. He's considered pro-abortion rights, a co-sponsor of the Freedom of Choice Act. But Gore, the Vietnam veteran, supported the president on authorizing military action against Iraq. I feel 
that I owe my vote to an expression of support for the resolution authorizing the use of force. I hope it will not be used. I'm afraid that it will be, but I will vote for that resolution. Gore's appeal in the South was amply demonstrated with his strong showing as a presidential candidate on Super we Tuesday, 1988, three weeks before his 40th birthday. His fellow senator from Tennessee, Jim Sasser, worked for Gore Sr. when Gore Jr. was in high school. Uh, he's not the, the uh, joke-telling, uh, back-slapping uh, type of political person that many people identify with, uh, with politics. Uh, he's issue-oriented. I'm proud to stand here with Bill Clinton at the beginning of a long, hard fight. The similarities are apparent. Clinton and Gore are both Southern baby boomers. But there are also big differences. Clinton, the man who started from humble beginnings, and Gore, who spent his whole life as a political insider. Bob Franken, CNN, Capitol Hill. While Clinton had the final say on his running mate, Gore's selection is one that should please fellow Democrats. A CNN USA Today Gallup poll out today asked registered Democrats and those leaning toward the party just who they preferred as the vice presidential nominee. Gore came out on top with 29%. Nebraska Senator Bob Kerry, said to have been a leading candidate for the post, finished second with 20%. Indiana Congressman Lee Hamilton received 8%, followed by freshman Pennsylvania Senator Harris Wofford. But nearly a third said they didn't know or didn't have a preference among the choices. Among others, Wofford and Hamilton publicly praised Clinton's decision. I do think that differences between a vice presidential candidate and the presidential candidate are very common. Uh, you cannot take a person with a long public record like mine and like uh, Bill Clinton's and not have some differences in that record. My own personal view is that some differences are, are even desirable. I think at last we can, with Clinton and Gore, truly turn the, pass the torch to a new generation. I think that's going to have a great appeal. I think Gore brings a national appeal uh, as a true leader of the environment. And uh, I look forward to campaigning for the ticket. Jesse Jackson, however, said having Gore on the ticket does anything but broaden it. Jackson said it takes two wings to fly, and here you have two of the same wing. And the CNN USA Today Gallup poll shows the presidential race remaining a statistical dead heat, although both President Bush and Clinton are picking up some support at Ross Perot's expense. Bush leads in the latest poll with 35 percent, Perot follows with about 30 percent, and Clinton close behind at 29 percent. A similar poll taken in late June showed Bush and Perot virtually tied with Clinton trailing. The margin of error on this poll is plus or minus three percentage points. The 92 presidential race is about to get another dose of sex and scandal via a new kind of telephone ad. A $4.99 toll is supposed to let callers listen in on tapes of Bill Clinton and Jennifer Flowers. Flowers made headlines for her claim she had an affair with Clinton. He's denied it. The toll call is sponsored by the same group that created the Willie Horton ads during the Bush Dukakis contest for the White House in 88. It's a new twist in tactics. Another change in this year's media ad campaigns is a move away from fast-paced sound bites. This is the year of much longer political commercials. CNN's Charles Feldman reports. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it again. President Bush, Governor Clinton, and undeclared but presumed candidate Ross Perot are about to go to war. Just like the primary season, a war of television commercials aimed at helping define their images, highlight their strengths, gloss over their weaknesses, and in some cases, just make us all feel real good. Nothing new here. That's been happening since TV commercials in the 60s emerged as a powerful tool in presidential politics. So powerful that this commercial for Lyndon Johnson, depicting Republican Barry Goldwater as someone who might plunge the nation into nuclear war, aired but once and is remembered to this day. All of God's children can live. What is likely to be different for this campaign is the 30-second commercial appears to be on the way out. We know for a fact that the candidates are exploring longer commercials. All the candidates have made inquiries with the major television networks. How long is longer? How about a two-and-a-half-minute commercial for President Bush? Or a 30-minute one for Governor Clinton, all aimed at giving viewers a diet with more substance and fewer cliches? I think people in this country are looking for more than sound bites and 30-second commercials. Frank Greer is Governor Clinton's media consultant. 
He helped select one controversial advertising agency whose work is noted for innovation, like this ad. Your mother wears Nikes. Now, if you are not looking forward to longer political commercials, look on the bright side. Experts say the longer the commercial, the less likely it is to be a vitriolic attack on the opposition. Some think, despite all the talk in the end, 30-second commercials will win out, although carefully placed. To put them on shows uh, such as Roseanne and The Simpsons, where those viewers may not have figured out who they're going to vote for. Whatever the length, the commercials should prove interesting. Ross Perot has hired the man who created Ronald Reagan's Morning in America commercials and reportedly may begin advertising next week. Meantime, President Bush will rely on a more conservative group of commercial makers whose spots for car makers like BMW are highly polished but tried and true. Charles Feldman, CNN, New York. Bill Clinton's choice of Al Gore raises questions about balance in the ticket. Analysis of Clinton's pick of another Southerner at the half hour. And how Gore's wife, Tipper, affects the Democrats' strategy. But up next... The war in the Balkans tests the resolve of European leaders. That just ahead. From one end of the earth to another, introducing AT&T World Connect service. Now when you're traveling with an AT&T card, country to country calls are as easy as dialing AT&T USA Direct. AT&T, it's all in the cards. Michael? That's Michael Jordan! On an average day, Michael Jordan lasts through hundreds of autographs. And has one bowl of whole grain Wheaties with breakfast. Yeah, but it's a big bowl. Wheaties sticks with you. It's hearty whole grain wheat with all the bran. So can Wheaties satisfy you more than some airy, lightweight cereal? Can I get back to you on that? Betty to Wheaties. 2 a.m., 36 Pine Street. Apartment 4C has a backache and can't sleep. 3C overdid her afternoon workout and is paying the price. 2C had an aching back, but fortunately, she also has Tylenol PM with extra strength Tylenol pain reliever, plus a gentle ingredient to help her sleep. And a good night's sleep was all she needed to make her day a whole lot brighter. Tylenol PM so you can rest easy. Welcome to Hotel Views, the summer getaway. Holiday Inn or Ramada, Bob? Thank you. Susan, you heat rash. At Holiday Inn, you get a place to eat, a place to sleep, and a place to swim. Come on, it's a perfect vacation. Bob, you compost heap. Ramada's got great rooms, nice restaurants, and refreshing pools, just oh. like Holiday, but at a better price. And now with Ramada's summer sale, you and the family can get away for as low as $39 a night. You could save it up to buy some breath mints. There's no debate. Ramada's in, holidays out. President Bush told Bosnia's President Izetbegovic today that the U.S. would consider using military air power to thwart, thwart Serbian artillery pounding the Republic. Mr. Bush and other leaders at the European Security Conference in Helsinki are formulating plans for global cooperation to stem growing regional violence in the post-Cold War era. CNN World Affairs correspondent Ralph Begleiter has the story. The profusion of new nations in Europe and Central Asia since the death of the Soviet Union is finding a new soul and maybe even a new police force in the European Security Conference. It's the bloodletting in the Balkans that has shocked Europe into searching for the political, moral and military power to bring itself back under control. Instead of having global, the global uh, struggle, we've got regional conflicts which are capable of making small eruptions turn into growing malignant tumors. Czechoslovakia's outgoing president Václav Havel, a playwright, captured the agony of post-communist Europe in a poetic speech. Peoples are now remembering their past kings and emperors, the states they had formed far back in their past, and the borders of those states. Havel said ancient conflicts, wrongs, injustices, and animosities are suddenly coming back to life. 
Nothing, he said, has been forgotten or forgiven. Europe has become a breeding ground for fanaticism, intolerance, demagogues, authoritarians. The wider the arms of democracy open for the post-communist part of the world, the faster it will be rid of the demons of hatred, violence and ethnic fanaticism. The European Security Summit is expected to approve plans for using NATO and other European troops as peacekeepers. Let us decide, right here and now, to develop a credible Euro-Atlantic peacemaking, peacekeeping uh, capability. Ad hoc operations of hasty, uh, hastily assembled uh, units will not suffice. A communique being issued Friday establishes new early warning systems, mediation services, and a peacekeeping mechanism that could include troops to deal with ethnic and border disputes. Because the crisis in the Balkans is already so intense and the United Nations is involved, the Security Conference is contemplating using its new powers elsewhere, such as in ethnic conflicts in the former Soviet republics of Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Moldova. This loosely organized conference is gaining respect, especially because it provides a new umbrella for small European nations that don't have enough clout to avoid conflicts. Still, until this group acts to successfully prevent or settle one of Europe's new conflicts, its credibility is untested. Ralph Beglatter, CNN, at the European Security Summit in Helsinki. Supercomputers are being used to give a lift to aircraft design. Just ahead on the world today, scientists are learning if you want to fly fast, you need the help of an even faster computer. New Kellogg's Just Right versus Total. The debate between high nutrition cereals will begin. Kellogg's Just Right has a new improved taste. Total tastes the same. Plus, we have four different grains, now even tastier. Oh, my. Not to mention our blend of juicy raisins, sweet dates, and crunchy almonds. Well, total